Happy Vlogmas, everybody. This is not particularly festive of a video, but I grew up with this book, Corduroy by Don Freeman, and got this board book copy for our daughter, and I've been reading it to her for bedtime sometimes. And it's a really cute little story if you're not familiar with it. Stay tuned. We're going to be reading it today. Um, but reading it not just as a story, but as sort of an academic exercise. I don't know if anybody else has ever done this, but um, there's a lot of parallel structure and themes and stuff in here that I think are really interesting. So I'm going to share those with you today. An academic look at Corduroy by Don Freeman. Story and pictures by Don Freeman. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for someone to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. You can see with the art here, he's sort of neglected, right? He's being ignored with a lot of the other toys as well are being ignored. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said, look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. So notice that phrase, always wanted, that's going to come back again. I think this, in retrospect, is going to be the point where Corduroy, as a character, is sort of born and becomes a character. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Again, pointing out that he's neglected. He's been left on this shelf with the other animals that also look kind of dead-eyed dead and sort of neglected. Um, none of these toys are characters, except for Corduroy, who has just been given life by the interest of the child. Right? Just the bear I've always wanted, she says. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. Now you see that he has some expression in his face, um, that he's, you know, watching them. His head's a little bit tilted. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. See, Corduroy has agency now. And everyone else seems, I mean, they're asleep. But other than that, like, they're never characters in the story. All the other toys, so. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator. And up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. I feel like this is sort of a side theme, but the fact that, like, he is a toy. He has no agency in his story, but he's, like, he's being carried along by this mountain, which carries him upward the same way the, do the girl will carry him up the stairs later in the book. Watch out for that. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. See, the words he chooses, I've always wanted, exactly what the little girl said, what he heard her say. And so that's part of his story now. That's like what his thinking is. And so he's like, he sees a thing. He thinks, is this what I've always wanted? I guess so, right? I guess I've always wanted. So he wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. There's no guessing at this one. He does always, he has always wanted to sleep in a bed, right? That's something that he's looking for. That's one of his goals now. Uh, and up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. At once, he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried, and he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. See, the thing he wants, he can't get for himself. He yanked and pulled with both paws until... Pop! That's my baby making noises. Button and off the mattress, corduroy toppled. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. 
When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. See, he's not just taking the elevator. He has, like, he's a human. He has agency. Now, who in the world did that, he exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding around here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all, and there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Now, if either we're going to take the story at face value, in which uh, case the bear has, like, he's able to walk around and move and talk and do things, or it's a story that the little girl comes up with to sort of have a backstory for this bear that she wants, right? Um, and I think that makes more sense, because obviously you wouldn't have a, a human interacting with a stuffed toy like that and just taking it for granted. But, so it's all imagination exercise. Mm -hmm. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. See, now they're all asleep. But you notice the, the way everything is colored. They're all very washed out and gray and in the dark, and Corduroy's green really stands out in this picture, showing again how much more important he is than the other toys. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning, and there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same girl he'd seen only the day before. See, in the meantime, she's been maybe imagining this story, or maybe that comes later, but she's been thinking about him all night the way that he's been thinking about her. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night, I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank, and my mother said I could bring you home. See, the story of both of them are sort of parallel. We have Corduroy looking to complete himself and get what he needs, by taking action. The girl takes that same action. She could just wait for her mom to save up money for it, but no, she decides to move on her own and use her own money to buy the bear. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. No, thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. So I kind of compare this picture to this one earlier, where he's not the one moving up the stairs in either case. And there's a little bit of a parallel design in those pictures, I think. Corduroy blinked. See, at the top of the escalator or at the top of the stairs, he finds something. A room, right? First he says, a palace, I think I've always wanted to live in a palace. Here, Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers, furniture, and along size, alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed, just the right size for him, not the giant king size that he had been in before, right? The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. See, he finds what he really has always wanted. And it's not the, the palace and the rows and rows of beds, it's just these two little beds and a place for him with his, his girl. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. And so I hear, like, yeah, there's the important lesson of I like you the way you are, but also, like, they were both sort of looking, they both have that goal of getting the shoulder strap repaired, right? You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. So I think when it comes down to it, this story is, Corduroy has the same personality as Lisa, because Lisa chooses him gives him that personality, and so they have a lot of the same goals, a lot of the same, um, maybe mannerisms, same wording, um, and the same things that they're looking for. And I just think, I don't know if there's a lesson in all of that, but there's a lot of that parallel structure that I had never noticed before growing up, because it was just a cute story about a bear. Um, I just thought that was really cool, and I wanted to share that with you and share one of my favorite stories. Um, and there you go, that is a video. And I will see you in the next one. We only have two more Vlogmas videos. Oh my goodness.
Thank you for joining me. Subscribe because there will be a couple more and I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.